Hello friends and welcome to another itemization video. Today we're going to learn more about Lotus Orb, which is a really unique item in what it offers. And although it can be a bit straightforward where you get it when you need to reflect or dispel something, it's also got some nuance to it, so we're going to cover that today. Let's start with the stats. Usually we skip over these, but we'll mention them real quick this time. Plus 10 armor, pretty solid. There aren't too many armor options out there. So this is nice, but it's also kind of funny because the reason you buy Lotus Orb is to deal with spells. And so if it's a heavy spell lineup, you don't actually need the armor. But fortunately, usually most games, there's a mix of physical damage and magical spells. So the 10 armor is just nice. But, you know, if you just need armor, you're probably not just buying Lotus Orb, right? It's You're buying this to deal with spells. The regen, the mana regen, health, uh, health and mana, also pretty solid. At the point, as a support, when you buy this item, you probably don't need the HP regen. You might have tranquils, you might have some other regen, healing, whatever. The health regen, not a huge deal, but the mana regen, always nice to cast more spells. And the 250 mana pool, it's kind of nice, honestly. Um, compared to something like Glimmer Cape, which adds a mana cost to your, your toolkit, but doesn't provide any mana. Lotus Orb has a mana pool, and it kind of covers its own cost, 175 mana, which is quite a lot, so it's nice that Lotus Orb gives you some mana. Now we're actually going to skip the active for a little bit. Let's talk about these components real quick, because then the rest is all going to be about the active. The active is the most important part, let me say that real quick. Let's talk about the components. It's actually got kind of a nice... It's, it's like this moderate tier where these are kind of expensive items. They're all 800 to 1400 roughly. And, you know, that's moderately expensive, but also not the worst. You can save up for it and buy this in pieces. Uh, the energy booster, probably the first item you're buying if you're getting arcane boots. And then it's really nice because you can disassemble them later to build a lotus orb if you didn't need it for anything else. So that is a... Nice little benefit, and if you're going to do that, buy the energy booster first. Otherwise, if you really need armor because they have like a phantom assassin who's been deleting you, then yeah, the armor's really nice. But in many cases, I would recommend getting the void stone first. You actually can't see it here, but it builds into the perseverance, the void stone, and the ring of health. Many heroes just need more mana regen, so that is kind of the most valuable item to me. And that's what I buy first most of the time. The Ring of Health. Again, by the time you buy this item, I just don't think you really need more health regen. And so that tends to be the last item I buy. Except that it's also not because it combines with the Void Stone to only take one slot. When you're building this item, often you are a little slot restricted. So if you're buying the Void Stone for the mana regen, and then you want to buy like the Energy Booster but then it doesn't fit in your slots, then it doesn't do anything in your backpack, so then you might as well buy the Ring of Health because at least you'll get some regen. And in a, a rare case of item combinations, the Void Stone and Ring of Health actually don't provide any additional benefits when combined into the Perseverance, except that they only take one slot. So oftentimes I end up building the Perseverance first, then the Plate Mail, then the Energy Booster, but buy it as you need it. You know, if you have mana pool issues, get the energy booster. You know, it's it's flexible in that regard. Now let's talk about the active because this is really what you're here for. First thing I want to note, you are still affected by reflected spells. So keep that in mind. But when you use Echo Shell on yourself or an ally, because it can be targeted to your teammates, you perform a basic dispel on them. And then they have this shield for six seconds. And most single target spells cast on them will then be cast back to the original caster. Some spells do not. We'll get into a couple of those later. And you also cannot create this like infinite casting. Like if one person's Lotus Orb and then they, <laughs> they cast a spell on someone else with a Lotus Orb, you know, it doesn't infinitely go. It gets reflected once and then that's it. So there's three ways I think of to use this active. There is the preemptive reflect really good with instant disables because you just like you don't have time to react so you're kind of putting it on your carry first and you give the enemy two choices 
you either force them to wait six seconds for Lotus Orb to end before they can cast the spell, or they have to cast the spell anyways, because don't forget, they are still going to, let's say it's a hex, they are still going to hex your carry, for example, but then they get hexed themselves. And the reason that's good is to avoid chain stuns, our next point. So let's say Lion. Lion blink hexes someone. That is four seconds, I think. And then he uses his stun, which is 2.6 seconds. So your carry may have a BKB, but it's, it's honestly hard to react in time to a blink hex, you know, even at the highest level. That's tough. And so they might die in those six seconds and they don't get to use their BKB. And so that's what Lotus Orb is really good for. You cast it on your carry ahead of time. And so that if Lion decides to blink hex, your carry is still going to be hexed for four seconds. But at least Lion is also hexed for four seconds and he's not going to be able to get the chain stun off because your carry will BKB before the stun can come out after Lion hexes uh, end. Now the enemy team may have some other stuns. That's like its own separate issue, but you can at least break some of these chain stuns. Lion's not the best example because his hex is four seconds, but other forms of crowd control like uh, Yules. Let's use Yules. Um, like Lena tries to Yules your carry and then drop the stun. If you, and let's say they don't have a BKB or maybe they don't want to use it for this. If you Lotus Orb them and then she Yules, she's never going to get that stun combo off because she's also stuck in the air with the Yules. So in this way, you can avoid chain stuns. Along that same uh, idea, channeled crowd control, this is a really good way to deal with that. Something like, uh, let's go with uh, Shadow Shaman's Shackle. If he casts Shackle on someone who is affected by Echo Shell, he starts channeling, and then the Echo Shell target, they start channeling, and they just cancel each other out. And that's a really great way to deal with channeled spells, such as Pudge Ult or Bane's Fiend's Grip. Now, of course, they should know that, and they should not cast their spells while Echo Shell is up. Um, so really, if you're using it preemptively, you're just trying to buy six seconds for your carry, for example. It's like, okay, you can go hit the tower for like four seconds, and then you want to back off before Echo Shell ends so that they don't start this chain stuns or channeled CC on you. But of course, they may mess up, and in the heat of the moment, they may cast a channeled spell on a Lotus Orb target, and then that's just overall great for you. There is also reactive reflex. So moving on from this, reactive reflex are kind of an outplay mechanic where the enemy team has some kind of slow projectile, something like uh, vengeful spirit stun. Let's go with that. And you can see her cast it, right? She goes, Ooh, and you go, Beep. you have tons of time to react. And so you Lotus orb the target, it hits them, bounces back, stuns her. In that case, she doesn't have her own chain stun, so it's like, whatever. But it's easy to reflect the stun that way. Um, maybe someone like Gyrocopter. He wants to rocket someone and then go up and hit them a bunch, but you can see the rocket coming in. You Lotus Orb the target, rocket gets reflected. Now Gyrocopter's gonna get stunned, and he has to decide, like, okay, do I wanna attack this stunned target, or do I have to deal with the rocket? Do I have to back off, be safe? All of that. Um, and this is best with slow projectiles, but honestly, it kind of works with instant disables too because people have kind of tells that you can predict what they're about to do. So if you have vision of the target and you see Lion suddenly walking towards your carry and he's about to enter blink range, you kind of know what he's about to do. He's about to blink hex your, your carry. And so if you know he's going to do that, you wait till he enters around that blink range and then suddenly you Lotus Orb your target. If Lion does not react in time, he then blinks and hexes and he's like, oops, that guy just like Lotus Orb before, like right as I blinked, you know, my bad guys, oops. Um, but that's really just a uh, sick play on your part. So it's easiest on slow projectiles, but if you can read the enemy and their movements well, you can also prevent instant disables or not prevent them, but reflect them. Then there is the reactive dispel. You can use this on yourself or your ally, just like this active in general, and you cast this basic dispel. It is instant, and that is pretty big. So for yourself, your dispel choices tend to be, as a support, tend to be Yules, which has a 2.5, well, you get dispelled immediately, but you're stuck in the air for 2.5 seconds. So say you're like a Dazzle, and you need to grave someone, but you get silence. So you like, you use Yules, but then in those 2.5 seconds, your carry dies anyways. So 
that dispel takes time and it can be an issue. So then your options are Guardian Greaves or Lotus Orb, which are instant dispels, and you can remove silence immediately and then cast your grave right after. Greaves are pretty expensive. They're a bit more expensive than Lotus Orb. Hmm. I wouldn't say one is better than the other. It kind of depends what you need, but they're at least your options for basic dispels. And then there's BKB2, which is a little uncommon on most supports. And it doesn't let you dispel an ally. Lotus Orb is the only item you can buy which lets you dispel an ally when you use it on them. So that is a very unique aspect to it. But honestly, not why you buy the item, I think. As a support, by the time you buy this, you know, it's probably like, it's probably 25 to 40 minutes into the game. And if there is something urgent to dispel, your cores have probably bought something to deal with this on their own. So someone like a Timbersaw or Huskar who needs to deal with Spirit Vessel, they've probably bought their own Lotus Orb, a Yules, a BKB, something like that, and they are dealing with the dispels themselves. Manta, that's another one. They don't really need you to dispel things on them, but maybe they do, you know? Um, the, I would say by the time you buy this item, as a support, it's more about the reflect because you don't want your carry to get chain stunned, for example. And I use that as the example because that's like that's really what comes to mind. It's like, I can't let this guy get chain stunned to death. And so that's why I'm buying this Lotus Orb. You could, for example, with uh, channeled crown controls, another way to approach that is to think, okay, I will stun or, you know, whatever, silence the, the guy. So like Pudge. If Pudge hooks and ults my carry, I will try to stun that Pudge. That's a fair approach, but depending where you are on the map and what mobility items you have, that can be very difficult. So for example, take the high ground siege. And this is where I think Lotus Orb really comes into play. What's really safe for you if you're the sieging team, is to be in this green box here, somewhere back here. And of course, like that makes the most sense. If you're approaching high ground, you're, you're somewhere down here, probably maybe even a little further down off the screen. These walls are impassable in general, you know, ignoring four staff and mobility spells. You can't walk through these walls. And what that means is this whole back area is very difficult for supports to get to, especially because this tower's here. But even if the tower was dead, this part of the map is still just dangerous for you. This is the enemy's territory, and you would much prefer to be back here. So the reason Lotus Orb is really strong is because while your carry is standing somewhere here, you can Lotus Orb them, and then you continue to stay in a safe area, and if the enemy tries to engage on your carry, they stun themselves, reflect their spells, whatever, and you have a much easier time doing that. If you have someone like Pudge standing back here who hooks your carry in and then starts ulting him here, and you're like, I'm going to go stun that, you can, but you're going to have to run into this enemy territory under the tower. You're going to start to feel uncomfortable. You're going to be at risk, and it starts to get tough that way. Or you have, like, a Bane who fiends grip someone from back here. Maybe you don't have mobility, and there's no way for you to get there without just running through, and in that time, the PA jumps you and kills you or something. Well, she probably should be killing whoever's fiends gripped, but, you know. The point is, Lotus Orb lets you stand back here and defend your carry here without having to come all the way back here. And so that's going to become a little bit more obvious when we talk about the different heroes you can consider Lotus Orb against, but I want that idea to stick with you. Lotus Orb is easier to cast from a safe distance, especially preemptively. So for, like, say you're taking this tower, you have a drow. You're worried about her getting chain stunned. You Lotus Orb her, she walks in, she hits for five seconds, she backs out. You wait for the next creep wave. You wait for Lotus Orb to come back up. You do it again. What's her alternative otherwise? If she doesn't have a Lincoln's, she has a BKB, you know, does she have to BKB and come hit this tower? That's a long cooldown on BKB. It's safer, for sure. Like, BKB is way safer than a Lotus Orb. But it is the BKB. That is a big commitment. Maybe a Lotus Orb is enough. And that's why it's pretty good. And better off, why not both, you know?
Now, even though you can cast it on yourself or your teammates, any of them really, I really do feel it is about protecting your core, probably your cores in general. You kind of have some flexibility there, um, especially about whoever's the tower hitter in those situations like we just talked about, but it could be anywhere on the map. I don't know, like if you have to use it on yourself, you have to, but and we're support. You're supposed to support the guy, you know? I, I, it's just what I want to emphasize for you guys. When I buy Lotus Orb, I'm maybe I'm thinking a bit about the dispel for myself, um, we'll talk a little bit more about that when we go into the heroes, but the overarching image for me is how it can help save my core and let them be free to do, like, I've spent all this time letting them farm, get up a bunch of damage. Now I want to help them be able to use that damage and not just be chain stunned. And that's what Lotus Orb is to me. Now, we are going to go into the heroes pretty soon. But you can buy Lotus Orb as a response to certain items, and so I want to cover that here before we move on to heroes. First, let's talk about things that aren't reflected. There are a couple spells that are not reflected, Soulbind, Spellsteel, Morph, and Spectral Dagger. For whatever reason, the bear's on here because you can cast Lotus Orb on the bear, like, because thinking about protecting your course, the bear is a great candidate to hit the tower. So you might not realize, I, I certainly didn't, until making this video. I, I think I knew this, but I don't, I don't know, guys. If you cast Lotus Orb on the bear, you, you can do that, and it will dispel the bear. You don't reflect any spells, though. He's a hero creep, I guess. And for whatever reason, that means he doesn't get to reflect spells. So don't cast it on the bear. Now, some other things that aren't reflected in terms of items are the urn and vessel, and then the medallion solar crest. I kind of feel like Solar Crest should be, but there's probably some coding in there that makes it difficult. But you cannot reflect these, so it's worth keeping that in mind. But if you look at this nice little Venn diagram here, those can be dispelled. So we talked about preemptive reflecting versus reactive reflecting and reactive dispels. These items cannot be reflected. And so... And, and let's throw dust in there too if your hero is has some kind of invis mechanic and you don't want them to get dusted and then killed. You may want to save your Lotus Orb until your Huskar gets affected by Spirit Vessel, for example. And then you Lotus Orb him and dispel that off. He'll be very happy and then he'll be protected for six seconds from there. Instead of casting on him ahead of time and then the enemy goes ahead and uses Spirit Vessel and now there's no way to dispel that. So you may want to keep that in mind. Now, some items are reflect only. So a hex, yules, halberd, the stun. Actually, let's go into these. The stun and hex, these cannot be dispelled. Um, they can, but you need a strong dispel. And this is only a basic dispel. What's this item called? Nullifier. <laughs> it, I feel like I should see this item more, but I don't. I don't know. I'm not a carry player, so whatever. I think it's pretty good, though. But anyways... This cannot be at least basic dispelled either. I'm actually not sure if it can be strong dispelled, but it can't be basic dispelled, so... Mm. And then the Yule and the Halberd, you can't dispel um, Disarm, at least from Halberd. And the Yules technically can be dispelled, but it's really... You can't target your buddy. So it's a... Uh, there are only like a couple things that can dispel Yules, and Lotus Orb is not one of them. But you can reflect these. So if your target is, let's say you use your Lotus Orb on Drow, and then they get hit by one of these spells, they will reflect that to the target. So that is really good against an Abyssal, because the only people that buy Abyssal are usually the other cores. And so let's say Troll wants to kill your Drow. Troll uses Abyssal on her, but if you have her Lotus Orbed, then they both just stun each other, and then they both end the stun at the same time. And then it just becomes like a normal fight at that point. And you're not giving the troll a couple seconds to just bash, hopefully chain stun, right? If you're a troll, <laughs> if you're not on troll's team, not hopefully, but you know, troll's hoping to chain stun, bash her and kill her. Um, and so the Lotus Orb helps deal with that. The Hex, I feel like the Hex is not as great because the Hex tends to be from like the mid or the support. And so they use the Hex and it gets reflected, so they get Hex 2, 
but then the enemy carry is still free to go in and possibly kill your core and at this stage of the game i feel like this uh this idea of like 30 to 40 minutes i kind of do feel like it's the carries that kill each other it's not always the case sometimes mids do it but i just i think it like a little lower than the abyssal dagger the halberd because this comes from like supports and off laners usually they don't care like okay i disarmed the drow and ooh i got disarmed oh no i can't right click i'm a timber saw i don't care you know i'm a i'm a centaur i don't care uh so it's nice in that you can reflect the the disarm but it you know your carry's still disarmed at the end of the day and that's not good you can't really do anything about that that's your carry to deal with with uh like bkb or something but eh, it doesn't hurt to reflect it but it's not going to be like amazing now some things can be dispelled and reflected so silences the roots guys dagons and all what am i doing here hang on and of course dagon which can only be reflected and not dispelled. I don't know why I wasn't... Who did that? Dagon, I actually don't think is that useful to reflect because kind of the same with the uh, Hex coming from the mids. It's that your carry still gets bursted. And yeah, you reflect some damage, but your carry might still be dead. So it's like, eh. But it's also kind of nice so that like if you're dealing with someone who's a bit fragile, like... Um, Man, who even buys Dagon nowadays? Let's say like Pugna. You know, he might reflect a lot of damage to himself and he may not want that. Maybe he's low and that is going to deter, uh, deter them a bit from casting it. So it's like, it's not too bad. Now to things that can be dispelled, dispelled and reflected. Uh, you got a root, you got silences, ethereal, diffusal. You have to decide what you need. If you have someone like Troll on your team, he doesn't really care if he gets silenced too much if he's not actually about to die um, because he just right-clicks and he doesn't really care. Maybe Troll's not the best example. He actually does kind of care. Um, let's say Drow. Drow doesn't really care if she's silenced or not. And so in those cases, it's actually really nice to reflect the silence onto someone like the Queen of Pain, for example, who tried to blink onto the Drow and then they silence each other that actually kind of favors Drow. And so you want to cast this ahead of time to prevent people from, to try to silence the, the enemy. But then if your carry needs to be able to cast a spell, so now going to troll where he usually doesn't care, but if he's close to dying, he really wants to ult. And if he's silenced, he can't. And so if you, if you have that kind of situation, you actually want to hold on to your Lotus Orb and wait to see him silenced and then dispel that to make sure he can ult. In that same vein, Ethereal Blade, I think is actually better to dispel rather than reflect, because if you reflect this, sure, the, the caster, the original caster is now hit by Ethereal Blade 2, but it's probably being used on your carry, and when you're Ethereal, you cannot right-click, and so, I don't know, you have like a Pugna, and your drow, and both are ethereal. Who benefits there? It's the pugna, it's not your drow. And so in this case, I think it's actually better to hold on to your lotus orb, see it used on your carry, you're not gonna reflect it, whatever, you can dispel your carry right away and they can get back to right clicking. And I think that's a lot better. Um, diffusal, you can dispel, you can reflect. Honestly, I don't think it's that high impact. The slow is like annoying, um, but by the time you pick up this item, your carries can often just stand there and fight. So, you know, you don't really have to deal with it. It's more about maybe yourself even trying to get out of uh, uh, running away from a core who has like slowed you down. You can like dispel yourself and like run away. And then same, same deal with the root. I just think like at this stage of the game, most carries have a way to deal with the root. And so it kind of depends if you want to reflect it or not. But these are the major items I think about. There are a couple other items, I'm sure that can be dispelled or reflected, but I, I don't think they're that significant. I think these are the most important ones to discuss, and so that's that. Let's move on to the heroes now. All right, we got a lot of heroes here. We will not talk about each and every single one 
in depth rather than just paint a general idea for many of them, but some of them we will be talking quite a lot about, so this will be a bit. Okay, let's start. Bane. This alt pierces BKBs, so the only real way to deal with it is to stun Bane, have a Lincolns, or have this Lotus Orb. So whenever you see Bane, I think it's really valuable to pick up a Lotus Orb because you either cancel his ult, which is great, um, if he casts it on someone who's been Echo Shelled, or you at least deter him from using it for six seconds. And that's also, I mean, that's pretty good, right? That's like six seconds of free reign for your carry. And uh, it's just really hard to deal with it otherwise because he has a really long cast range. And going back to our um, example of that tower, if he's sitting in the back, it's so hard to deal with that. And so casting the Lotus Orb on your carry, I think is great. Pudge in the same vein, you know, his ult range is very short, but his hook range is really long. And so he hooks someone to him and then he ults. Um, and that actually gives you a lot of time to react if you're close enough. When you see the hook coming out, then you can cast the Lotus Orb. And Pudges, good Pudges, try to shift click the spell. And so if they don't react in time, they're going to use the ult and just cancel it out. Great, you made him waste his ult. If he manages to cancel it in time, that's too bad, but he's not going to ult your carry, so your carry now has time after getting hooked to try to BKB and get out, or at least they have the BKB going while they get stunned. Eh, maybe they don't want to. Eh, it depends on the game. Point is, they have some leeway to react those six seconds. A Bat Rider, if he ults someone who is Echo Shelled, they both just sit there, and that's not the best because your carry is still disabled. But at least he's not getting dragged like into the fountain, into enemy territory, whatever. Um, so in that regard, it at least forces Bat Rider and the carry to just sit there, which is better than being dragged back. Now Venge, we talked about easily being able to see her stun come out and reflect that. But more than that, it's her swap, which you can use to bring your carry way into enemy territory if it's uh, favorable for her to do so. If you use the Lotus Orb on your carry, if she uses swap, they just, <laughs> nothing happens essentially. She uses a swap and they swap, but then they swap again. So that part, I mean, great. <laughs> nothing happened to your carry. So it's all good. Uh, it, technically, it still cancels the uh, channel, but if your carry is trying to TP out, sucks for them. Shadow Shaman, we used him as an example. He is a really potent... Um, chain stunner if he blink hexes maybe he doesn't even have a blink he just hexes into the shackles that is really bad so even if you don't react in time to see him hex you can then lotus orb your hexed carry and he at least can't use shackles until the lotus orb is done which means your carry may then get a chance to maybe bkb manta something some kind of survivability spell and try to get out of there now rubik's on here too because these are just some like instant disablers really here. It's that his lift is instant. And because he has his passive, that lift is actually quite long, followed by any spell he may have stolen, any stun he may have taken, which makes him a chain stunner too. Maybe he has shackles. Maybe he just has another stun, but that stun is also going to be increased in duration. So lift into a second stun can be pretty bad. And it's uh, it's actually very easy to overlook this, I think. People forget that he gets that huge debuff increase and so you can get stunned by rubik for a really long time and so the uh the lotus orb is really nice to help prevent that then there's lion another chain stunner we mentioned him you can reflect his alt too i don't think it's that uh, like honestly i think about the counter to lion with a lotus orb is about the stuns like i don't really care that you can reflect his alt as much because at the end of the day, if he's trying to burst your carry and he does, and he dies for it, you think he cares? He doesn't. He killed your carry as a position five. Like, how does that not benefit him? It benefits him. So really, it's about preventing the chain stun. Lich also has the fear, which it's not as easy. It's technically instant, but it's a little easier to react to than like the hexes and the lifts. Um, but all of his offensive spells are pretty much single target. You can't reflect the uh, the shield, but you can reflect his other spells. So like the fear to cancel the channel um, is really nice. 
And if you happen to reflect his ult, that is a really big team fight ult. Um, so compared to like Lion, where you reflect that ult, like that doesn't feel that great to me. But reflecting Lich ult feels a lot better to me. Wyvern, same idea. This instant initiation, which can come from a pretty long range as well. If she ults a Lotus Orb target, like she then gets ulted herself, and that can create this like stalemate, depending where she's positioned, where your carry is ulted, but now she's ulted, and maybe some of her teammates are hitting her instead of setting up on your carry. So that part works out pretty well for you. Or if she gets the ult off and you don't reflect it, what are they going to do when your ult, when her ult ends? They're going to try to chain stun that guy. And so if you can cast a Lotus Orb, they have to go like, all right, we can chain stun him, but like we're all going to get stunned too, and we're not actually going to be able to make as much use of this chain stun as we would like. So that works out pretty well. Beastmaster, similar vein. Um, either, either casting it preemptively on your carry to deter him from using Roar. However, he's kind of okay with that because if he stuns your target for a while and then gets stunned himself, like his carry is still free to attack your stunned carry. And so that's generally good for Beastmaster. But it's still, I don't know, it's still really nice to be able to try to use... Um, to deter him from using Roar. Um, or at least after he uses Roar to initiate, throw it on them and try to prevent the chain stun after. Bloodseeker Rupture, another really big ultimate. It sucks because your carry is still ruptured. However, one of Bloodseeker's, like, his whole thing is like, I'm super speedy, zipping around when everyone gets low. And so if he ruptures himself, he's gonna kill himself if he runs around too quickly. And so that forces him to stop moving as well. So that part kind of works out well if you can rupture him too. Still sucks to get ruptured yourself, but like, you know, if you rupture him, that's pretty good. And that's keeping in mind like the core matchup. If you see him using rupture on you and you reflect that, that's really good because it's like, who cares if you can't move? But if he can't move, that's like better. Razor, I think this is a pretty... I Like if I just saw Razor, I may not buy Lotus Orb for him, but he... Like, he, in combination with other single target stuns, make Lotus Orb pretty good, because if he uses Static Link on your carry, who is Echo Shelled, then they just link each other, and essentially, nothing happens. You don't lose damage, and in fact, I think you just both gain damage. I actually should have checked this. I should double check this more. Um, but it's just a, it's a good way to deal with Link at the end of the day. A Force Staff might be an easier way to deal with the Link, but, you know. <laughs> a Grimstroke, okay. Grimstroke is one I want to talk a bit more about. So Grimstroke, I mentioned, does not, like Soulbind is not reflected, and that is true. And you can't really dispel this either, so if you cast it on this guy and you use the dispel, he's still silenced. However, if you think about it, when Grimstroke uses Soulbind, the synergy is that the enemy team should try to cast a lot of single target spells on those targets, and so in that way, you're able to possibly reflect a lot of things, which is great. Downside, and the reason I said possibly reflect, is because, let's say he's Lotus Orb. So first off, Soulbind itself is not reflected. We mentioned that earlier. But now, hang on, we're going to have to do this again. Free spell, there we go. You only reflect things on the Lotus Orb target. So even if I cast the spell on axe and technically i then cast cast the uh, the hex on the lotus orb axe it doesn't affect me it has to be you have to cast it on the lotus orb target and then in fact it doesn't get reflected like this it's kind of this really weird interaction where like you are technically doing this single cast on the spells but it doesn't it doesn't reflect to you whereas if you cast it on this guy, it does get reflected to you and can possibly even stop the uh, the second spell coming out as well. So there's a lot of like really niche things that <laughs> you may have seen a Reddit post from, uh, I forget his name, the Zet, I think. Um, or there's also Bunny and they, they'll put like crazy in-depth analysis of like weird interactions. There's a ton around Lotus Orb and a ton around Soulbind. So as a general rule, 
it does not hurt to just throw the Lotus Orb on someone who gets soul blinded and hope that the enemy in their panic just casts their spells. Um, but know that it is kind of kind of finicky. And we also have Juggernaut on this list. Um, I'm sure you've all seen a clip where Juggernaut uses alt on a Lotus Orb target and they just like anime fight and bounce around. I mean, it works out great. Your carry doesn't get killed by Juggernaut, and hopefully maybe your carry even does some damage to some people around as he's bouncing around. So it's just a, uh, you know, you don't buy it just because they have a Juggernaut, but if they have a Juggernaut, it doesn't hurt. Sven is a hero, at least right now, that can justify buying a Lotus Orb just to deal with Sven. It's because with his Aghanims, he's really hard to deal with, but he will stun himself if he if you see him flying into a target, you lotus orb that target, and then when stun when Sven hits, a stun is immediately cast on Sven, and it's very difficult for him to react in time. I don't think he even can actually, and so it stuns himself, and now just both targets are are stunned, and this is one of the few ways to deal with Sven right now because he is very popular. However, I kind of su suspect with the uh, the next patch that this may get changed a bit. So that's why I threw him on the end of the list, even though I think he is a really big reason to buy a Lotus Orb. I, I'm just not sure if that'll carry on in the future because he's kind of busted right now. And he really needs to see some changes. So if that aspect of him doesn't get changed, then he's still a good target to buy Lotus Orb for. And not to mention that Stormhammer is also a single target spell. So even without the whole Ags shenanigans. Um, he just adds another single target spell to who you might consider reflecting. And if there are enough single target spells in a game, like it doesn't really hurt to get Lotus Orb, even if it's not, strictly speaking, like a full lineup of these kind of heroes. Now, as we move into these heroes, I want you to kind of continue the point we were just saying. There are even more single target spells in this game that I didn't mention. like heroes that aren't on this list and it's because i don't think it's as important to reflect those spells i tried to go over all the heroes and i came out with these the thing is at the end of the day the most important thing to reflect is usually some kind of stun and the most important thing to dispel is usually a silence or a crazy strong slow something like that so the more single target stuns or slows that the enemy team has the better they may have some things that you can reflect purely for damage or like lesser slows or whatever other kind of effects and i just didn't think those were as worthwhile or things you could dispel that i just thought like it's not that important but the more you have in a game of things that you can dispel or reflect the more likely it is to be a good lotus orb game and I would say so long as any of these heroes are, sorry, not these bottom ones, any of these top heroes that are in the game and then a couple other single target spells, like it could be a good Lotus Orb game. Um, so don't feel like, oh, he didn't mention, I don't know, Queen of Pain or like Jikiro on here. It must not be a good item. It's like, it's not bad to dispel those slows or reflect dagger, but it's just like, you know, I don't think it's as game changing and maybe you need a different item instead. Um, but if they're in there along with like a wyvern and a shadow shaman, like, sure, go for it. Okay. Let's go into some of these treant protector. You can, okay. Let's start with the, his, uh, leech seed. Yeah. You can reflect that and you can, uh, can you dispel that? Yes. All right. I, I suddenly doubted myself. You can dispel that. I don't know what this black box is. Um, you can dispel that, but it's not, it's not why you get Lotus orb from him. The reason you get Lotus orb is about overgrowth. Overgrowth is really funny. It's like incredibly strong and also not. If he uses overgrowth, that root is dispellable. And so you can then Lotus Orb a target and get them out of that. And they can also use Manta, they can use BKB, and they can get out of it. If you Lotus Orb your target ahead of time and he uses Overgrowth, obviously that's not reflected because an AoE spell, and then like that's not so good. So against Treant, you want to hold the Lotus Orb. And the reason it's so important is because against 
a BKB target. Let's say like uh, Sven. Ash Tree and Protector, if you use Overgrowth and then Sven BKBs, that's bad for you. If Sven BKBs and then you use Overgrowth, that's really good for you because Overgrowth pierces immunity. And so Sven can BKB, then be Overgrowth, and Sven has no reaction to that because Sven doesn't really buy Manta or any other kind of dispels besides the BKB. And so you can use Lotus on that BKB target and get them out of Overgrowth, and that's really strong. Um, that's really good. And I, it like, it made me struggle to whether I should put him in this top tier list or this mid tier. But the reason I put him in this mid tier is because at the end of the day, like against an agility hero, like, um, Morphling who can buy BKB and Manta, it's like not a huge deal because some stuff comes out, Morphling uses BKB, Treant tries to use Overgrowth, and then he just Mantas out, you know? Many carries have a dispel. They like work it into their build to deal with overgrowth. And it just comes down to like waiting to BKB until you see overgrowth or not. So like, I think it can just be moved in this tier where it's like, it's a cool interaction. Like if you see an, a treant on the enemy team, maybe get the Lotus Orb and be ready for that kind of thing. Save it until you see them use overgrowth. But at the same time, your carries probably have a way to deal with it. So not the biggest deal in the world. Same idea goes with Silencer where... It's a silence, and many people will build BKBs, Mantas, Yules, whatever. The thing is, this also pierces BKB, or spell immunity, I should say. And so if your target, if your, let's say troll, troll BKBs, starts fighting, gets low, and then global silence comes out. You can be affected by spell immunity and silencers, global silence at the same time. It is pretty much the only one that can do that, I believe, off the top of my head. And so then your guy is silenced and BKB'd. Now, if he has a Manta, Yules, like we said, doesn't, like, he's fine. He can use it. But if he doesn't, if he was only relying on the BKB, this is where your Lotus Orb can come into play and dispel the silence for him. Doom is down here. And in fact, several of these. We can cover them at the same time. Doom, Shadow Demon's ult, and Necrophos ult. Yes, you can deter these heroes from casting their spells if you throw the Lotus Orb out. However... At the end of the day, their spells still go out. So Doom has doomed a target. Shadow Demon has whatever this is called, purged a target. Necrophos has used Reaper Scythe on the guy. So they like they still cast their spells and your carry is still doomed. So yeah, Doom is also doomed, but like it still benefits them usually because then their carry comes in and kills your guy who can't fight back. Um so it's like, cool, these are really strong single target spells to reflect, but like Shadow Demon doesn't really care if he gets purged. Or like Necrophos, you know, he, he may be full health when he casts it. And he's like, oh no, I'm stunned for a little bit. That sucks. I got hit by Reaper Scythe. I took a bit of damage. Whoop, Q, I'm full health. I'm good. Like <laughs> these spells are good to reflect, but also not that significant. Like there are better things to build. Like Maybe a Lincoln's to deal with it, or maybe a Glimmer Cape to just reduce the damage your target takes from Reaper Sight. Um, so yes, they are single target spells. Yes, you can deter them a little bit, but at the end of the day, they're still affected by it. Um, Terror Blade. So Lotus Orb used to be, I don't know, what is this box? Lotus Orb used to be better against him because when he was BKB'd and then used Sunder, it was like really tough to kill this guy. Um, so you had to have like... Um, a Lotus Orb so that if he got low, like he was at 10% health and your carry was at 100, if he uses Sunder on Echo Shell, they swap twice. And so your carry still stays at full health. This guy, because the 25% minimum is there, he actually does heal up a, a little bit more. Um, but still, he remains at relatively low health. And then you can hopefully finish the kill. Now that BKB, this doesn't pierce BKB anymore, it's not as good. So if he is BKB'd and he uses Sunder on a target that has been affected by Lotus Orb, he will Sunder once. He will try to Sunder back, but Sunder will not go through the BKB, so he'll be fine. And so, yeah, I mean, it's just it doesn't work anymore. That's all I have to say about that. It's uh, it's like um, if his BKB is down, it's a cool way to protect your carry and prevent him from using Sunder. But if the BKB is up, then it's like, oh, I guess it doesn't work anymore. 
Um, you can remove reflection, that's kind of good. Um, if he uses reflect on say your specter, and now there's a specter illusion, uh, radiance isn't common now, but like when it was like, there's a radiance illusion burning all of you, you can dispel the specter and then that illusion, that reflection will disappear. Um, really good against, with certain heroes, like when you have a troll who like kills himself or something with his reflection. Slardar and Bounty Hunter, they use their ults on you. Um, get good vision, get some bonuses from that. So it's nice to dispel that. Uh, yeah, the Chakra Magic makes your carries lose all their mana. That can be a big deal, especially on like your mids. And so dispelling that off of them so that they're free to move. You know, it's kind of like this mini rupture where they're not going to die, but sometimes not having mana is as good as being dead. And so being able to remove that is pretty big. Warlock, you can reflect Fatal Bonds. And that can be extremely powerful because Fatal Bonds is a huge part of the hero. And so if you reflect that, that's great. The thing is, he can just cast it on someone else who's not affected by Echo Shell. And the, the Fatal Bonds can then attach to the guy who is Echo Shelled. So if Warlock messes it up, it's kind of a cool way to deal with it. But... It's also easy enough for him to play around it. Uh, so, and yeah, a cool interaction maybe pushes you a bit towards Lotus Orb, but also, like, not critical, I feel like. A Wind Ranger reflecting Shackles pretty nice, but also if you can reflect Focus Fire, it's kind of funny. Like, if you give Sven this crazy attack speed boost against Wind Ranger, that's kind of funny. Um, so that's pretty good. But again, she can kind of pick her own targets and move around the uh, Echo Shell. Lina, to mess up the uh, Yule's combo is really nice. You can reflect Laguna as well, but just not that huge of a deal, to be honest. It's like, it kind of goes back to the Lion ult, where it's like, she, you reflected on her, sure, but at the end of the day, your target still got hit by the, uh, the spell, so it's like, eh. Now, these guys just have a bunch of single target stuns. We're not going to talk about them. But, you know, like we said, the more single target stuns, the better. Sand King is really good because, for whatever reason, even if he does not target your carry, let's say you're, you, you use Lotus Shell on your carry, Sand King uses Q on the ground beyond your carry, it still reflects the stun. I don't know why that happens, but it does. And so that's pretty good. The downside, and the reason that Sand King's also on this not so good against list, is that you swap positions. So wherever Sand King was that used the uh, the stun, your carry is now in that location because they had to use the stun as well, which forces them to change their positioning, and that can be a bit of an issue because that could put your carry out of position. So it's kind of like good and bad. Witch Doctor single target stun. These guys have some single target stuns, which can actually um, be removed or at least. Uh, yeah, they can both be removed. I <laughs> doubt myself sometimes with these guys. Um, you can remove their like Malefice and Cold Snap, and that's pretty good. Morphling, you can reflect some of these, you know, some of these stuns, which are like okay. But then depending who he morphs into, like he morphs into any of these guys, then he has a single target stun too, which you can then reflect a bit, and that's pretty nice. Death Prophet. And in fact, this list down here is more about uh, the dispel. So like up here, these are like reflecting single target stuns. Down here, it's more about dispelling something. So dispel the silence. You can also reflect siphon, which is uh, kind of nice. Um, the silence. Silence is a crazy open wound slow, which really allows him to man fight um, because of that lifesteal. And so if you can remove that, that helps a lot. Dispel the, uh, the root here. Reflect some of the damage, uh, remove the root, 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 fear, and the stun. This is actually uh, dispellable. So if you see a target, like uh, she uses Curse Crown on your carry, you can actually dispel it for them. And uh, of course it can be reflected too if you cast it preemptively and then she uses Curse Crown, but it may actually be better to just dispel that rather than try to reflect it. Um, her root as well, his root, his root, and the fear, and then Medusa. I don't know. It's kind of nice. <laughs> I didn't know if I was going to put her on here, but it's kind of nice to reflect the Mystic Snake. 
um, because it is a bit of a slow projectile, so it's pretty easy to reflect if you want to. And then it kind of it, it'll uh, give your carry some mana back. So that part's that part's nice, you know. Um, but if she has an agonims, you don't get to reflect that part. You don't get to actually get the stun from that, even if your carry has an agonims. Um, so that's a downside. Now some carries where or heroes where a lotus orb may not be so good and may even be bad. So first off, there is LC. I would say this just ends up being, it's not always bad. Like it might still be a good Lotus Orb game, but this is just unfortunate where if you reflect the duel, you actually just get double dueled. And so whoever wins gets like uh, twice the, the, the points. And usually if LC is going to duel someone, right, the intention is to win. So it's generally beneficial to the Legion commander and she still gets dual off at the end of the day. So it's not like, oh, you reflect the, the shackles, it cancels immediately. When you reflect duel, you're still dueling. So that part's not so great. Um, but maybe you can reflect like the halberd and stuff like she typically buys. Eh, maybe not typically, but she frequently buys it. Um, so that can be good. And you can at least protect them in duel when like, say the Lena wants to come in and like blow up a ton of spells. You know, you're gonna at least get some return value there. Spirit Breaker, Tusk, and Sand King. You can reflect charge, you can reflect snowball, you can reflect the, the stun but it does affect your carry's positioning. And so that can actually be bad. It might pull your carry out of position and make the game tough, depending on how the fight goes. Um, usually if your team is strong enough, you don't really care. But if your team is losing or just on the, or like it's a really close game, positioning can be a huge deal. Now Night Stalker and Disruptor, first of all, oh, and Ricky, they have AOE silences, so if you're silenced by one of them and then you try to dispel that, it's obviously not going to work. Maybe not so obvious, so I'm still going to mention it. You do get to reflect some of their stuff, like uh, Night Stalker's Q and then the, uh, the Blink Strike, stuff like that. Um, Disruptor, the Glimpse, it doesn't really matter if you reflect it. Like, say he uses Glimpse on someone you've put Lotus Orb on. Your target still gets your carry still gets glimpsed, and he still has time to like throw kinetic field and static storm down before he then glimpses himself, or like he arrives at his glimpse location. So it's like not that great. Kunkka for the same reason with X marks. Yes, you can reflect it, but he still has time to set up the combo and cast X marks to pull you back. And your carry actually cannot activate X marks, so Kunkka just gets the four seconds, and he'll usually always get his combo off as long as he doesn't mess it up. Now Huskar's kind of funny. You can reflect the ult pretty easily. Um, but you end up, because it, it hurts you to cast this spell and then you deal damage when you arrive. So you both do that. You both take damage and do damage. And so you just chunk each other way down. And that usually benefits Huskar because he, he just fights really well at low health. And so that's generally bad for you. Also, that eh, doesn't really affect your positioning actually, because you have to land first for it to work. Um, but it's just, you just want to be a bit careful with that you may get your carry like insta killed against a huskar if he uses lotus orb you know pugna it's usually good for pugna you both decrepify each other pugna doesn't care that's actually good for pugna he's gonna he deals more damage and frankly he's just a better spell caster than almost all of you so he doesn't really care that he's gonna take more spell damage the live drain you both stand there and channel that Pugna is meant to do that. You think your Drow wants to stand there and life drain this guy? No, she's going to cancel the life drain immediately to move around. And so Pugna doesn't really care if you get the Lotus Orb. Storm Spirit, he has Electric Vortex. He has Scythes, Orchids, very common. You can't reflect him if he's in Ball Lightning. And it's very common for him to alt in and cast those ahead of time. And so as long as he's still zipping around, he like the spells won't get reflected back to him. And so that makes it not so great against good Storm Spirit players, but it may still mess some of them up who arrive at the destination. They're no longer in Ball Lightning. Then they cast like a Hex or a Silence, and then they cast it on themselves. And so that part's pretty good. Um, but just know that like really high level Storm Spirit players um, can play around it. And then Nyx Assassin, um, unlike... So Lion also, he can target the ground. It'll still get reflected back to him, same as Sand King. Nyx's doesn't. So Nyx can ground target, and then it won't bounce back to him. I don't really know why, but that's just how it is. I think it's because Nyx Assassins, 
I think lions and sand kings can be used as single targets. You can target a hero and you'll like follow them and cast it, but Nyx's doesn't. So even if you try to do that, he'll still cast like on the ground. And that's why Nyx's stun is generally harder to do. But I guess it also helps with the benefit that it doesn't get reflected by Lotus. Um, but you can reflect mana burn, but that's usually not a huge deal for him. It's uh, usually a bigger deal for you. And that's all the heroes. How long is this video? Ooh, long. <laughs> um, yeah. It is a bit of a complicated item. What it comes down to, though, is that if they have a lot of spells to cast that are single target, probably a decent item to throw on your carry to protect them. And really, at the end of the day, that is that. Just think, like, can this protect my carry? Look at their heroes and decide, hmm, it can. Okay, I might buy this item. And that's really what it comes down to for me. So thank you for watching. I hope that was helpful. And uh, leave any questions you have. Bye, guys.